Number five. So we are getting an angle zero one and we rotate it of an angle by two pi over three radian. OK, OK, let's try to draw that, shall we? Even if you are not all required to draw it, it's always always healthy to draw it. OK, so zero one, also known as J vector. Looks like this, right? You know what I'm saying? This is zero one. And we are going to rotate it from and counterclockwise to pi over three radian. So where would that thing end up? Huh. Hopefully you know enough of the unicircle thingy. So that looks about like 2 pi over radian now, doesn't it? So this is the rotation of 2 pi over 3 radian now, isn't it? All we have to do is figure out what this thing is. You know what I'm saying? And then, this is length of 1, right, for obvious reason. So is this side, so this vector, is it negative cosine 30 degrees? Right. You know what I'm saying? So is it pi over, or root 3 over 2? Do you want me to do it with a cosine and sine, or is this good enough? That's good. Okay, and then the other one is negative one half. Amazing, the picture just clears everything up, doesn't it? Yeah, that's all you needed to do. And this is not even worthy of multiple choice questions. So it's like whatever, right? Like, don't ask me how much work you're supposed to show this. Don't show anything. How's that? Okay. What you actually when once you walk into my classroom, were you shocked? when I said, try to show as little work as possible. Do you remember that moment? Like, oh, what? Because you're not used to this, because you went through Peninsula High System and you have to show every tiny little nitpick. Okay, let me give you a clarifi clarification on the recording. You only need to show me calculus work, okay? I really don't care about your algebra. I just assume you know it, and if you screw up, I take points. There's no partial in algebra efforts, okay? Either you got it or you don't got it. OK. What the heck is this, right? We're going to come back to this, but let's see if we can feel it, right? Because feeling it is so much more better than analyzing it. I want to do this. I think of it as a parent function and transformation. Just consider, ah, right, consider as well. Consider. R cosine theta is equal to 1, root 3 over 2. I'll just do 2 root 3. Just, let's just think about that. What is this thing? Also known as R is equal to secant of something times scalar. Do you see this is same thing as X is equal to 2 over root 3? You know what I'm saying? OK, let's sketch that thing. Let's just sketch it right here. OK, so that thing is just a vertical line, eh? I'm going to use this one. Whatever that 2 over root 3 is, let's say it's here. So this thing is 2 root 3. That's what that thing is, right? Now, now we are looking at r is equal to r cosine and theta plus pi over 3 is equal to 2, 3. Hmm, whenever you replace x with x plus something, that's a translation towards the negative x-axis. It moves to the left. So this is a polar coordinate. 
So guess what happens if you replace theta with theta plus pi over three? What does that do? It's a translation, but how does it translate? It translates to negative theta direction. You know what I'm saying? So in order to make it abundantly clear, I'm gonna, that same distance, oh, I regret putting this thing so far. Okay, let me try to move it. This thing, I'm gonna move it in so that I don't have to go as far. So if I now draw exactly same distance as that, this way and the direction, Rotation is pi over three, so 60 degree. Does that look like about the same length? About, right? And I'm gonna put perpendicular line right there. That looks about perpendicular. This is our thing, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel it? This is our line right there. Oh, we rotated that line counterclockwise, negative theta direction by pi over three. You know what I'm saying? So that thing you went that way by 30 degrees, right? I'm gonna put 30 degrees, I mean 60 degrees. Okay, like this, it's a 60 degree right here. That's a better picture. Okay, and some of you really want to analyze it, right? So let's analyze it, shall we? And then we should get something like this, okay? And you can figure out this y-intercept if we have to, right? This side is two root three. So do you see this side is four? You know what I'm saying? This y-intercept is negative four. Geometry is superior than algebra. I will analyze it. It's okay. It's okay. We, we can afford to analyze it. So this is cosine, cosine, sine, sine A. So we have R cosine theta plus, I mean, cosine theta, cosine pi over three minus R sine theta and sine pi over three A is equal to two root three, say yes. Okay, r cosine theta is x, right? And what's cosine pi over three? Oh, come on. Seriously? One half. Thank you. I was concerned. And this is, I, I just say it, I'm too afraid to ask anymore. Shall we multiply two over root three on both sides? Yeah, let's do that. Two over root, oh no. So shall we multiply both sides by two? Yeah, let's do that. Which, I don't know which is a better one. Minus root three, y is equal to four root three. You want slope and intercept form or is this good enough? y is equal to dividing by root 3, so 1 over root 3 x minus 4, right? Like I told you, this is negative 4 right there. How about that? Feeling it is so much better now, isn't it? Yeah, I like to think so. I'm a more of a geometer than algebraist. I hate algebra. <laughs> Okay, I hate formulas. Watch today's video. There's a big warning about against the formulas. Okay, don't be using formulas. There's a big warning, automatic zero. Okay, 47. 47 is a biggie. How many minutes do I have left? In the in this period? Five. 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 Oh, I better hurry. Okay. Okay, did anybody, did, did you guys want all of it or just uh, see? Whose question was this? 
Oh, it was mine. Just C is OK. Just the C? OK. Angle of an equation and in X and Y for the path of the particle. What? Oh, I see. Sorry, I thought the angle, single. God, dyslexia strikes again. So we are just basically eliminating X and Y, right? So let's do this. X over 3. That's a weird X. X over 3 is equal to cosine pi over 4 T. Good. I'm going to square both sides while I'm at it. OK. And then write y over 5 is equal to sine squared pi over 4 t. If I square this side. So far so good. And then here's one of the oldest trick in the book. I'm going to add vertically and see what happens. So I have x squared over 9 plus y squared over 25. And cosine squared sine squared, we don't even care what's inside, it's 1, hey? How about that, huh? That's an amazing trick now, isn't it? Okay, but it's still better to feel this thing, right? I'm not going to go through all of that again, but this is one of my first lessons I taught you, right? Parametric graph, this direction. Okay, let's move on to 49, okay. 49, I wanted to do 49 and because of B and also, yeah. Maybe C as well, okay. Does anybody want A? Ne? Nobody wants it. Actually, it's kind of important. So I'll kind of do it. How many minutes? Three. Three, I'll do it fast. OK, if I run out of time, you guys can quietly leave. But vector function, let's just get the concept of a vector function because many of you messed this one up on the test. OK, this is a vector function, isn't it? It's same as parametric, just X and Y written as a vector. And then we want the velocity vector, OK? And velocity vector is 2T here and then U, 6 over 5 t square here. Good. OK, and then magnitude of the velocity vector at 4. You can do that, right? You just plug in 4, so we can do this. And then you can figure out whatever that is, which I will just copy from the Dropbox note, 104 over. No, 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 no. no. And then take a, uh, you know what? I'm just going to think like this, because this is the one that you messed up. What is the speed of this? Speed of this, and then we put this thingy, right? And then many people just figured this thing out and took a absolute, like, no, 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 it's not absolute. Maybe perhaps this is like pre book knew what it was doing. Do you remember that double absolute value sign? In case you're this in a higher mass, this is known as the norm of a vector, size of the vector. Okay? It's not the same as an absolute value. Many of you mess this up. Okay? So the way you compute this is square root of this square plus this square. You know what I'm saying? And then you can figure this thing out. Right, and this thing turns out to be 104 over 5. But this expression itself is very, very important, okay? Now, this is what I wanted to do. Total distance traveled at opposed, as opposed to total displacement. I'm going to do displacement first. Displacement is this, isn't it? I'm just right there to R. And that is, what do you integrate from zero to four? You integrate this velocity vector. OK. 
okay, which is just this thingy, 0 to 4, 2t, dt, and 0 to 4, you just do this component-wise, you know what I'm saying? So this thing gives you a vector. You with me? And many of you did this and found the magnitude of it. No, 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 no. That's not how you do it. As opposed to the distance vector. Distance is not a vector, it's a scalar. And then what do you integrate? This is a huge concept in calculus. This is what you do. And what that means is, you take this expression that we found, speed, you integrate speed, and speed and velocity are not the same thing. I mean, in 1D, it's an absolute value of it, but in 2D, they are not even the same species. This is what you do. Not even close. You know what I'm saying? And we get an ugly, ugly number. Good. Okay, then I will do C. So you guys can carry these two integrals out, right? Actually, this one is pretty complicated, but most of the time, this is a calculator. And many of you messed this up on the quiz. Okay, that's why I wanted to go over it. And then see, uh-oh. Okay, dy over dx, okay? dy over dx, there are a few ways to get it, including, you know, solve it for one and plug it in. Wow, that's a lot of work, right? So let's try to be a little bit clever, okay? Now, yeah, let's be clever. So I'm gonna calculate dx over dt, and dx over dt is the derivative of the x component, or is my x there? So we have 2t, and then dy over dt, and there's my thingy, 6 over 5 t squared. So far, so good. So I'm going to calculate dy over dx, and that is this thingy over this thingy, correct? So I would have 3 over 5 t so far with me. But this is a function of t, not function of x. I want function of x, right? So what do we do here? Well, let's find out what x is. This is what x is, right? Say yes. So do we see that x, I'm going to rewrite it here, x is, where was my t squared, minus 2, which means x plus 2 is equal to t squared. So my t is equal to plus or minus square root of x plus 2. So far, so good? So far, so good? Now, which one do I pick? Now, this particle motion is greater than zero here. You know what I'm saying? So, we are not taking the negative sign. We're going to take the positive sign, that one, and then we plug it in here. So, we have dy over dx is equal to 3 over 5 square root of x plus 2. Wasn't that a clever trick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 